Under Ottoman control, the Eastern Gate of Jerusalem, sometimes known as the Golden Gate, was sealed in the 16th century and connected to biblical prophecy in Ezekiel 44, 13, thereby opening only for the prince identified as Jesus by Christians. Beyond mere history, it represents Jesus as the only road to atonement. Jesus and the sealed gate have a great relationship since it awaits its opening during his second coming, therefore reflecting the fulfillment of God's will for atonement. Fascinating believers and academics, this last indication combines forecasts, previous happenings, and ideas. Come explore with us why the gate is closed until the second coming of Jesus. Many years ago, intelligent people expected its story to be different, and millions of people eagerly awaited its release. This gate is a physical marker and a metaphor of particular messages, good intentions, and assistance from a higher power. A gate closed for a long period right in the midst of Jerusalem has a narrative that makes people doubt. What we know about faith and history. Anticipation drove many questions regarding the intriguing tale of this closed gate, including why history records that only one person, who Christians identify as Jesus, can pass through it. One has to first know what history tells about this closed barrier before one can grasp it. Eastern Gateway of Jerusalem, sometimes known as the Golden Gate, is the gate under discussion. Long ago, this gate shaped people's beliefs and the way the city was defended. Still, why was it closed and who decided to close it? Most people still ask and wonder about big question. The narrative transports us to the 16th century when Ottoman Empire member Sultan Suleiman, a strong leader, chose to lock the gate. This covered more than only safeguarding the city or erecting buildings. It was mostly related to people's opinions and the particular messages they expected to come across. Smart people understood closing the gate was more than just keeping people from passing through. It was a significant event that repeated through history. It addressed the core convictions and forecasts unique to Muslims, Christians, and Jews. Closing the gate was like making a prophecy come true for Christians, demonstrating that what the Bible predicted was happening and pointing to events that would later be expected in line with their beliefs. We begin to see how significant this old occurrence is as our knowledge of it grows. The locked gate is not only from the past, it's like a symbol linking history, forecasts, and personal opinions. The book of Ezekiel 44, 13 has the prediction. Here, the wise man and prophet Ezekiel discuss a gate the Lord. The God of Israel, past, should remain closed. According to the forecasts, this gate should remain closed until opened just for the prince. For Christians, this prince is none other than Jesus Christ, proving how unique he is in the narrative of being rescued. Considering all of this, one could question what the connection between Jesus and the locked eastern gate might be. Understanding the relevance of the prediction and what it implies in Christian teachings depends on this link. In Christian doctrine, Jesus represents the spiritual truths they speak about and is considered as completing past predictions. As Ezekiel pointed out, in Jesus' life, the locked gate signifies much. As Jesus states in the Bible and the New Testament, particularly in John 14, verse 6, it reveals that only through Him can someone discover the unique method to be saved. Closing the gate is therefore not merely a historical event, but also a sign of what Christians believe. About Jesus as the lone link between mankind and God, when one considers Jesus returning, this indication becomes even more significant. Many Christians consider the opening of the sealed gate as a significant event demonstrating that God's will for human redemption is whole and His kingdom is founded. Historically, Jerusalem, a city significant to many religions, has seen this gate as rather crucial. It is significant as over the years it has witnessed several major events. Regarding beliefs, the sealed gate represents God's promise and what people expect, not only concerning its physical components. Christian views reveal how faith, history, and ideas interact. Especially when Jesus returns, it is a clear indication of the significant customs in Christian belief and the major focus for what people expect in the future. Therefore, this gate is a potent symbol that still inspires and shapes people, both believers and academics, not only a relic to ponder over. It connects the physical and spiritual in how individuals view religion, therefore demonstrating how faith endures.
Jerusalem's gate old city boasts eight main gates and a large wall around it. Early history of the city closed eastern gate, staring toward the Mount of Olives, is unique. Built in 520 AD, some believe this gate to be the oldest one. In the 6th century or later in the 7th century AD in Hebrew, Sha'ar Harachamimi, Gate of Mercy, or in Christian tales, the Golden Gate would go directly to where the Jewish temple once stood. Jews would worship near this gate to be as near as they could to the holy site, since it is closest to where the temple was. Ottoman Sultan Suleiman closed the gate we are seeing now in 1541. The gate's outside, as it appeared in the 16th century, is a sealed double entrance into two vaulted chambers. On the northern edge of the Temple Mount's eastern wall sits the Golden Gate. Erected in several phases, initially under Hezekiah's reign, then in Zerubbabel's time, the Hasmonean period, and famously during the Herodian period, the wall we see today was erected in several stages. It is thought that the present Golden Gate was built on eastern wall ruins of an earlier gate. Probably from a past gate, an arch runs straight under the Golden Gate's shuttered door. In his book Antiquities of the Jews, historian Josephus from the first century notes a eastern gate at the far northeastern extremity of the inner sacred court. The Mishnah describes an old causeway reaching the Mount of Olives from the Temple Mount eastward over the Kidron Valley. Rabbi Eliezer objects, claiming it was marble pillars with cedar boards used by the high priest and his assistants rather than a causeway. Only the high priest and those helping him utilized this entrance, the Shushan entrance. When handling the red heifer or scapegoat on Yom Kippur, it wasn't for everyone. The precise building date of the present Golden Gate is uncertain as Muslim authorities forbid excavation on the Temple Mount. Scholars from the 19th and early 20th centuries disagreed on when the gate was constructed. Some argued for times before Islam. Recent studies by academics including Hamilton, Sharon, Bendov, Rosenayalan, Safrir, and Wilkinson suggest timing the gate to the 7th or 8th century AD. During the Umayyad era, Different opinions abound nowadays. Some propose a late Byzantine date while others an early Umayyad one. Some academics believe that the gate we see today was built on the remnants of an earlier gate in Jerusalem. Under Justinian was building activities circa 528. Another explanation holds it was constructed later. In the 7th century by Byzantine craftsmen hired by the Umayyad caliphs. Studying the gate in the 1970s, Dutch archaeologist Lien Rittmeyer feels that the massive gateposts inside the gate belong to an older structure, thought to be the Shushan Gate. Mentioned in Mishnah Midat 1, 3 as the sole gate in the Eastern Wall, dating back to the First Temple period. Philosopher Maimonides penned in his Code of Jewish Law that someone arriving from the East Gate would travel on level ground until he reached the end of the rampart. From there, they would climb twelve stairs to the court of women, each half a cubit high and tread half a cubit. Brick burning took place in the inner recess, or vestibule built on the western side of the Golden Gate during the Ottoman era. The bricks created were then used to remodel buildings within the Temple Mount enclosure, sometimes known as the Haram Esh Sharif. Originally built to serve the brick burners, a little mosque existed next to the Golden Gate. To create room for restorations, the Sultan, however, ordered the demolition of this mosque and a piece of the gate's wall in the 19th century. Two more arches and a new wall were then erected to the western side of the gate. Accessed from the Temple Mount by a wide flight of stairs, the gatehouse has a modern ground floor shaped like a rectangle measuring 24 meters by 17 meters with outside wall measures. Surrounded by walls, a row of columns divides this area in two equal sections. Under ground level, within a tomb, the top of an old arch is clearly visible while the lower stones remain buried below. This implies that ground level originally was far lower than it is now. Repurposing the walled-up gate, the Ottoman Turks created a watchtower. Description of the Gate The Golden Gate, located in the Al-Aqsa area, is a rectangular stonework construction with two ornamented facade. Unlike several other gates in the Al-Aqsa compound, the eastern facade is built level with the wall rather than two meters outward. Two routes make up this gate, clearly shown in its plan and principal elevations. Leading to the Door of Mercy, Bab al-Rama, 
and the Door of Repentance, Bab al Tauba. The ground level boasts a domed hall split in two aisles by four columns. Two roof domes cover the ceiling of an upper floor room, while three pairs of domes span the passageways. The eastern front originally featured two big doors split by a 3.90-meter-wide column with a semicircular arch and a decorative frieze. These doors were closed, though, throughout the Ottoman era. The decorations of the Golden Gate resemble elements of other non-Muslim Levantine buildings. The rectangular domed vestibule of the gate opens out 20.37 meters in length and 10.50 meters in width. Originally featuring six shallow elliptical domes, the hall eventually changed to only two. Two central columns and arches of elliptical form separating these domes spring from two pilasters at the entryway. The facade's unusual architectural change two meters out from the wall suggests a precise description of its placement. The main inquiry about the gate is related to its purpose. The Golden Gate Gate has been opened and closed countless times in past. Muslims closed it in 810, Crusaders reopened it in 1102, but Saladin walled it once more in 1187 following retaking of Jerusalem. Rebuilding it in the city walls, Ottoman Sultan Suleiman the Magnificent locked it shut in 1541, and they have stayed closed ever then. Though Suleiman's choice may have been defensive, in Jewish belief, this gate is supposed to be the gateway for the Messiah. Given Muslims view Jesus of Nazareth as the Messiah, Suleiman sealed the Golden Gate to stop a fake Messiah, sometimes known as Antichrist, from entering. To prohibit a false predecessor to the Messiah Elijah from going through, the Ottomans even constructed a graveyard before the gate. Elijah is a priest or Kohen based on Islamic doctrine since he is descended from Aaron, so fulfilling Islamic teaching. Though this is not totally accurate, a Jewish Kohen is not permitted to enter a cemetery. Other laws or halakha allow a Kohen to access particular graves as long as purity rules are observed. 2003 saw Israeli officials close the Golden Gate's entry on Temple Mount due to ties. To Hamas linking the entity running the site to terrorism. The gate remained closed to stop Islamic waqf from conducting illegal building projects that Israeli officials say damaged ancient relics during times of Jewish presence. Although the gate itself is still locked, the inside of the gate was reopened for Muslims from Temple Mount in February 2019. Jerusalem's walls and gates have seen several cycles of destruction and repair. The eastern gate is the oldest and keeps its original position. Fascinatingly, the eastern gate stayed unaltered during Suleiman the Magnificent's AD 1539-42 rebuilding. Identified as Nehemiah's time stonework from the 6th century BC, monolithic stones in the wall point to their ancient beginnings. But in 1541, Suleiman closed the eastern gate in line with Ezekiel's prophecy. Suleiman fulfilled the prophecy prophesied 2133 years earlier, albeit being a Muslim. Efforts to open the gate ran into opposition. Some Jewish military personnel thought about opening the sealed gate during the Six Day War but an Orthodox Jewish leader objected, claiming that the Eastern Gate can be opened only when the Messiah comes. In Acts 2, Peter quotes Joel 2, 28, 32 to show the events of that day, applying a prophecy that only can be fulfilled after the second coming of Christ. This use raises questions regarding the Golden Gate and Ezekiel 44, 1, 2. The Holy Spirit allowed Peter's use of Joel under scriptural inspiration but no statement by Jesus on the Eastern Gateway exists. Using the definition of foretaste as something indicating what is to come, we can cautiously view the Golden Gate as foreshadowing. However, this interpretation should align with the unchangeable Word of God and not solely rely on historical experience. If we consider the Golden Gate a foretaste of the future Eastern Gate, it would rely just on historical experience and need more scriptural support. While the Golden Gate may hint at God's work during the Millennial Kingdom, as long as it stays closed under miraculous events, conclusions should be based on the unambiguous words of Scripture. Some commentators mention a popular belief about the Golden Gate, linking it to Ezekiel's prophesy. The Golden Gate is seen as a symbol, maybe shadowing the future East Gate of the Millennial Temple due of its location and centuries-long closure. Biblical expositors clarify that the gate mentioned by Ezekiel is the Temple Gate, not the present-day Golden Gate.
There are various legends and traditions, including an old Jewish tradition linking the sealed gate to the return of the Shekinah in the Messianic Age. Jewish history holds that the Messiah will enter Jerusalem via the Eastern Gate, Sultan Suleiman. A Muslim tried to stop the Messiah's arrival by sealing the Eastern Gate with 16 feet of cement nearly 500 years ago. The sealing of the Eastern Gate in Jerusalem has attracted the attention of prophecy students or believers. Ezekiel's book mentions a gate facing east multiple times. In Ezekiel 10 verse 18 to 19, the glory of the Lord departs the temple via the east gate, heading to the Mount of Olives. Ezekiel 11 verse 23. Later, the glory returns to the temple via the gate facing east. Ezekiel 43 verse 1 to 5. Ezekiel 44 verse 1 and 2 chronicle the closing of the gate therefore implying that the Lord, the God of Israel, has passed through it and cannot enter. Since then, this example has probably encouraged Muslims to bury their dead just outside the eastern wall of the Al-Aqsa area. In any case, if the name Al-Rahma means it has been there since the gate was built, it suggests the gate is part of an overall idea related to the place. Specifically the rock, like that of the last day. Another probable explanation is that during the Crusader period, when this habit was first recorded, they were not allowed into the city. Where the Western Wall was situated, why pray in medieval times for kindness at the former gate at this site? Hence the name Gate of Mercy. In Christian apocryphal books, the gate was the scene of the meeting between the parents of Mary. So the gate became the symbol of the Immaculate Conception of Mary and Joachim and Anne's meeting at the Golden Gate. Became a standard subject in cycles depicting the life of the Virgin. Some equate it with the beautiful gate mentioned in Acts 3, although many others would disagree. The basis for equating the golden gate with the Greek horas. Beautiful is the confusion between the Latin aurea, golden, and the Greek horas. Jesus, riding on a donkey, went through this gate on Palm Sunday, fulfilling the Jewish prophecy about the Messiah. Ezekiel 44 verse 1, 3. The Synoptic Gospels seem to support this idea by stating that Jesus descended from the Mount of Olives and immediately reached the Temple Mount. Mark 11 verse 1, 11 verse 11. Alternatively, the Gospel of John suggests that the Pharisees were observing the arrival, possibly from the Temple Mount. Those who believe the Golden Gate fulfill a prophecy in the book of Ezekiel 44 verse 1 to 3 interpret these words spiritually. For Muslims, the gate is known as Bab al-Dahabi or Bab al-Zahabi, meaning Golden Gate, sometimes known as the Gate of Eternal Life. Muslims also regard this site religiously as some believe it is where Allah's final judgment will take place and where the future resurrection will occur. Following the Jewish tradition, as mentioned earlier, and inspired by tales not included in the Bible about the life of the Virgin Mary, medieval Christian artists depicted the meeting of Jesus' grandparents, Joachim and Anne, at the Golden Gate. All three religions attach great relevance to the Golden Gate concerning past and future messianic events. The custom of a groom bringing his bride across the threshold of their marital house may have its roots in the traditional symbolism of the Golden Gate for the faithful. This couple came to symbolize the Christian ideal of purity in married relations. In medieval art, the belief in the Immaculate Conception of Christ's mother was often depicted in images of the Virgin and Child with Saint Anne known as the Materza in Italian, showing three generations of grandmother, mother, and son. This metaphor also plays a major role in the personalist phenomenology of Pope John Paul II and his Theology of the Body. A collection of reflections on this theme titled, Crossing the Threshold of Hope. These writings were aimed at encouraging Roman Catholic believers facing challenges like materialism and increasing se and were published on the eve of the new millennium in 1998. The threshold between the earthly and celestial realms, symbolized by the Golden Gate, represents the mystical body of the Church, often seen as the Bride of Christ. In Christian beliefs about the end times, the sunrise in the East symbolizes Christ's resurrection at dawn on Easter Sunday and the direction of His Second Coming. For instance, the Ostra Brahma in Vilnius, Lithuania, honors an icon of Our Lady of the Gate of Dawn, revered by Roman Catholic and Orthodox residents. Congregational worship sanctuaries in Christian settings often face east, 
and city gates in Christian urban centers often contain religious items meant to protect the city from attacks and bless travelers. In Christian writings, Mary's parents met after the Annunciation at the eastern gate of the Old City, sometimes known as the Golden Gate. Consequently, the gate's location became a symbol of the virgin birth of Jesus. Christian non-canonical texts also describe that Jesus passed through this same gate on Palm Sunday, bestowing messianic significance on the gate. Finally, the sealed eastern gate of Jerusalem represents more than just a physical construction. It embodies a fascinating junction of history, prophecy, and faith. Its narrative from strategic sealing by Sultan Suleiman to the biblical prophesies of Ezekiel tears apart layers of relevance firmly ingrained in religious traditions. Sealed for millennia, this gate is a monument to the ongoing link between the earthly and the divine. So capturing the imaginations of believers from many religious backgrounds. Historically and theologically, it holds a prominent place in the landscape of the city, witnessing significant events and becoming a symbol transcending its physical existence. Let's hear your opinions in the comments on this finding. Furthermore, don't forget to enjoy this video and sign up for the channel for more. See you soon.